All right. So, hi. Tonight we are going to be making a cute little pillow. See? Ooh, so cute. Just some quick little home decor piece. It's a fun way to use up some extra spare embellishments and spare fabric, which I'm going to use all the fabric I'm using and the stuffing is going to be uh, repurposed from something else. And I'm going to show you how to, to just uh, create it without a sewing machine tonight. I was going to show you both ways, but it's really difficult to get the camera working with the sewing machine. So, and a lot of you probably don't have one or don't want to bring it out. So I, um, we are going to be using the Amazing Fabric Tac. And part of this I even created with the fabric tack anyway, so might as well um, use that and show you a quicker way instead of hauling everything out. So we are going to be using the Serena stamp. That's a new stamp for this release. And this is the stamp that we're going to be using. She's super cute, our little mermaid. We're going to be using her. I'm going to be using the new watercolor pencils that Prima has out. I love them. They're nice, smooth uh, color. The, they're soft uh, lead, so they go on a lot nicer and um, very even. Some of your um, mid, mid to low grade watercolor pencils really, unless you're buying a high end artist grade watercolor pencil, um, they're really uneven. The, uh, lead's really hard, so it's really hard to blend, and I find that Prima's watercolor pencils are really soft. They're very good quality watercolor pencils, so we'll be using those tonight. Let me go ahead and point the camera down, and we'll get started, okay? All right, so this little uh, girl, you could create a home decor piece. You could put, add a little pocket onto the back and make like a tooth fairy pillow. Or like a gift, you could make this um, as a gift to give to somebody, put a little pocket on the back as well and put a gift card in the back and you have kind of a two-in-one um, gift or present for somebody. Now, um, as I just mentioned, I'm going to be reusing some stuff. The fabric I'm going to be using for this one is actually uh, fabric I cut off of a dress. So I'm going to go ahead and use this up. I, I like doing that a lot on my projects. Um, if you're short like me, some dresses and pants and stuff come very long, so I keep all of my cutoffs, and I save them for other projects, which we're going to use tonight. Now, this one measures, this piece, this pillow, I believe is an 8x8. Eight eight. Um, it's about an 8x8. Eight eight. Well, we'll just make it eight, this one. We're going to be doing, I think I cut this one seven inches, or it's like seven and a half inches wide. I'm going to go ahead and cut it at an eight by eight piece of um, fabric. Now we're going to be needing a piece for the front and the back. This is um, some canvas, like stretchable canvas for art. You can use this, you can use duck cloth, um, anything heavy based. You can find it all at your fabric stores. Duck cloth works really well. That's what I used on this one. It's a closer knit, a tighter knit. So that's what the um, Bloom Girl, the Bloom bags, the canvas bags, tote bags are made out of, are like a duck cloth, which, with, with, which it's really nice because all of your art mediums, and those of you who went to Art Venture know, know this, and you can saturate the heck out of the top of it, and it takes a lot, and I mean a lot, of material to seep through the surface plus they're easier to clean the fabrics easier to clean so any type of fabric though will work for this project um, let me go ahead and cut this out now I have a quilter square which I'm going to use to kind of make this a little bit easier let me see yeah my chat's not working okay So um, I have the quilter square, it makes it a little quicker. You can of course use your uh, ruler as well. I bought one of these actually to use in my paper crafts because it's easier to make a square. So let's see. I'm going to mark off. I don't have a cut mat on here or I would use um, my little 
roller do to cut the fabric, but that's okay. I'm just gonna make a straight line. Here, let's cut off this excess over here. You don't need to contend with. Okay. So let's see here. I think this is bottom edge is pretty close. Now the canvas I'm using, it's gonna fray really easily. So I want to give myself enough room. Um, an eight by eight, if we cut it eight by eight, it's gonna give us about a seven and a half inch finished piece because you take about a quarter of an inch all the way around. We could always also take it in at half an inch, which we might um, all the way around just to give us a little safety net. So go ahead and cut it eight, eight by eight. It'll give you a seven and a half to seven inch finished um, finished pillow. I'm gonna just make my line down here. Now I'm using a pen, it doesn't matter because we are going to um, actually cover it so it doesn't matter. Okay. No, no calling. Sorry you guys. Okay. Eight. We want eight. Go across so I get to eight. I love sewing, but I'm like the worst person to follow a pattern. Like the worst. Make sure you're all lined up nice and neat. Okay, then we're going to cut this out. Again, you should have an 8 by 8 inch square. Now, if your fabric's kind of wrinkled, I suggest getting it wet prior to starting let it dry completely flat or you can iron it of course but you guys will probably laugh at this but I do not have an iron we do not own an iron but I also don't buy clothes that need ironing <laughs> either <laughs> all right so we have our front piece okay And now we're going to cut our back piece. And then once we have our pieces cut, we can go ahead and get started. Now this is kind of thin, but I think once it's put together, it'll be okay. Um, as long as you're not putting, you know, you don't look through it, you're fine. So let's make our little square. This is going to be fun because I don't have, let's see, I need a white pin or something. That I could actually see. Huh. Didn't think of that earlier. Um, silver will work. That's if the pin works. Oh, I have one right here. <laughs> All right. Again, I'm going to cut off this extra stuff because it just gets in the way. This would be fun to make a couple for like kids and stuff using old t-shirts or old um, sheets that they have in their room. Alrighty, so let's move this down to eight inches. just to get us started. And this fabric is really um, flexible, so it's gonna be kind of hard to cut. And, okay. And there's that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this corner and then re-measure. 
once I cut this corner out to get our 8 by 8 because I'm cutting off of a funky piece of fabric. As you can tell, even though I had it straightened out, it's not straight. It's got, it doesn't really have stretch to it, but it the way it's um, knitted, it kind of bends and tweaks a little bit. Okay. This is when our little roller doodad thing comes in handy to cut fabric. Okay. All right, so I'm going to bring this up here. Let's do this. And if you're a little bigger than 8x8, that's okay. Because honestly, since we're not using a pillow form to fill the pillow, it could be any size you want. Now the original, I took an old stuffed animal and took the stuffing out. You know, one of those claw animal, you know, the claw, the animals you win um, using the claw machine and stuff. This time I have some batting that I had left over, it's not enough to make a quilt or anything, so I'm just gonna use that to fill our pillow. My hand's really shaky today, I don't know why. So again, this is kind of a project you can create using some of the scraps that we have. All right, so we have our blue, our pretty blue. Looks really bright on screen, but it's not that bright. Okay, so we have our two pieces, our front and our back. And now we're going to go ahead and start on the front of our little pillow. Okay, what did I do with my piece of cut? Da, 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 da. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, tape this down because my fabric is somewhat wrinkled just to make it a little easier on myself and for you guys to actually see it makes sense huh oh come on not working out as I planned, but that's okay. We'll make it work, yeah? Okay. So you will need, I suggest, a permanent ink pad. I'm going to be using the archival ink pad just so I know if later on something gets spilled on it, it's not going to run um, everywhere or smudge. Also, while I'm using the watercolor pencils, you don't want anything that's going to reactivate. I know I've shown this similar technique before, but I really wanted to show you how well the uh, new watercolor pencils worked. And I'll show you a couple examples on our uh, watercolor pad here as well tonight so you can see how smooth they actually um, go on. Now, we demoed, I demoed, and we did make and takes with them at CHA this year, and everybody were, they were surprised on how, um, smoothly they blended and how much color vibrancy they had. So I'm just pushing this down. Okay, so we have our little girl. Now if you don't get a lot of the detail in her hair, don't worry about it because we're going to add embellishments to that anyways. Um, again, I, the closer the knit of your fabric is, the cleaner your image is going to be. I'm going to shorten her 
camera down a bit. Come on. There we go. It's a little better, huh? All right. So now that we have it down, we're going to go ahead and bring out our watercolor pencils. Now, um, there's six color sets. I only have two of them here. I have uh, Julie Nutting's uh, Hair and Skin Tones, and then I have the Earth Tones. And each one comes with 12 pencils in the set. And I wanted to show you, if you haven't seen them, they come in a nice tin, which is really nice to keep them nice and organized. And each one is has a number. The colors aren't on here on the tin, but when you're wanting to kind of do color um, tables and things like that, when you, some people, especially like with the markers, they'll write down the numbers so that they can keep track of what colors they combine to create a certain uh, piece. So they are color coded by numbers so that you're able to keep track of that, which is really convenient. And then here is the earth tone. A lot of grays, you have a lot of grays and browns in this set, All right? And I also have <laughs> one of the blue <laughs> from the other another set. I don't have the full box, but this is what I'm gonna actually be doing around her silhouette. Does anybody have questions? Any any questions? Yeah. I know the color schemes are really pretty. The way they broke down the color combinations is really nice. It takes a lot of um, kind of the work away of trying to kind of combine color tones that work complement each other. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking this blue color all the way around the edge of her features on the outside and add Now I may actually, since we're doing a darker pillow, the other one was kind of light, um, I'm going to take a purple or red as well with this and blend them together. This, the outside, you can add as much color as you want. That's kind of up to you. Back here. Carly will probably take this one. It'll match her room. Okay, I'm going to add some, let's see what other, what other color I have in here. I didn't get a whole lot in this set of actual colors, so... I have a green. Let me go sharpen. Let me sharpen that. Now, I will suggest that with these, you want to make sure you have a pencil sharpener that sharpens colored pencils. If you use a regular pencil sharpener, what will happen is it'll eat a lot of your um, pencil away and you'll waste a lot of material that way. So, invest in the colored pencil sharpener. Okay, I'm going to add some of this green. Oh no, they're Seahawks colors. Don't tell my husband. Don't tell him, he's a Seahawks fan. Just because he's from Washington. <laughs> okay. So we have our colors down. I'm going to go ahead and take a paintbrush. Um, now, Prima also has the new water brushes out as well. So look for those. There's two in the set. And in each set, um, there's a small and a large uh, tip on them. And you fill them up with water. Okay. So I'm just, I'm taking a stiffer, a little bit stiffer bristle brush. You don't want something that's too soft. Like your nylon brushes... Um, really are too soft to work on any type of canvas. I would save those for your art journaling um, or wood, but canvas or fabric really eats them up, so I'm using a little stiffer paintbrush. 
and um, any like poly polymer or horse hair would work really well for, for this. Now you just want it damp, you don't want it saturated. And we're just gonna come right around, kind of work in a circular motion just to blend those colors together. Look at how pretty that color combination is. I'm bringing my water over here so I'm not reaching across. This is considered negative painting because we're not painting her right now, we're just painting the negative. So it kind of brings out our positive area. Keep going around. And look at how bright, and I mean, I barely added any color to this and how bright the colors are in this piece already. And I just started coloring it. And trying to be careful, I don't paint too much into her face because I don't want it to run, um, the colors to run. Uh, it would be so cute to make one out of the Quentin stamp. Make it all steampunk for like a boy's room or like a den or something. Oh, that'd be so handsome. Um, oh, sharpener difference. The difference between the pencil sharpeners. Um, the way that the sharpener itself is shaped, um, determines how the pencil is um, sharpened. Now the a water or a colored pencil sharpener will have a wider base to the sh sharpener. So when you're sharpening it, it, um, it, it helps with the softer lead. Pencils have a different type of lead, which is a harder base to it because it's a graphite. And um, the w colored pencils and watercolor pencils almost have like a wax base to them. So it just makes it a little easier to sharpen and it won't waste and break off your lead as easily. Okay. So we have our background done. Really pretty colors. Did that answer questions? Okay. Yeah. So we just did the background. Now I'm going to add just a little bit of it of color to her face. I'm not doing her hair tonight. I'm going to leave it the way it is. Uh, we're going to add a little bit of accents with um, some three-dimensional um, paint and add pieces with her embellishments. So I'm going to take out my little new skin tone set. And the numbers I'm using are 91 and 86. And 91 and 86 are kind of, this gives you kind of a yellowed tone to her skin. And this will be more of the warmer tones. And I'm going to blend a little bit of those together. So first I'm going to take my darker tone. This is uh, would be like a burnt sienna. I'm just going to go right inside the inside of her facial features. Along her hairline. She's a little piece up here um, along her eyes, around the edge of her nose. I'm going to go down her neck, wherever she's got skin, you want to add color. 
you can see, I'm just sketching it in. I'm not being precise with the fabric. Kind of gives you a little re uh, forgiveness. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of this uh, more yellow tone to our skin now. And we missed a spot right here with hair or with water in the background. Have to go in. Add in just a little bit of yellow on top. The reason why I mix those colors gives a little bit more dimension to the color. It doesn't make it look so flat. And by doing it before I blend, it's saving me a little bit of time. Okay. Oh, we gotta go down here for a little arm. All right. And now that we have our color down, you can see right around the edge, I'm going to go ahead with my brush again. Just a little bit of water. You don't want to go too saturated, and we're just going to blend that color out. Now keep in mind the thinner the fabric you're using, um, the more the, the paint, the water. Ah, I got red in there. How did that happen? Dag nabbit. Let's blend that out. <laughs> it picked up off of somewhere. I don't know what happened with that. She's got a little red mark. She's getting a little fresh with a merman. Continue blending. Should get a little fresh. Doing a little um, exaggerated on this one, just so you girls and guys, if you're out there, can see the color on the piece. I know sometimes with the camera it's really hard to see it. But look at how quickly we've gotten the coloring done. Very little effort. That, that's another reason what, why I really enjoy the watercolor pencils. Um, you can make a piece using the stamps and the watercolor pencils within minutes. Um, next Thursday I'm going to show you how to use the watercolor pencils when making cards and we're going to just do a real fun quick a uh, couple quick cards to show you how easy it could be you don't have to be professional artists to create masterpieces okay so i'm going to add a little bit to her cheeks and her lip i'm going to take the number i think it's nine um oh the brand <laughs> actually the brand i'm using is princeton um it's a company now. I've used these brushes. These are their Catalyst line. Um, I've used their brushes for years and I'm now working with them, which is pretty cool. So that's their Princeton. Um, it's their Catalyst collection. It's a really nice all-around brush. You probably recognize them more by the teal um, brushes. You can find those in most of your art supply stores or craft stores. So I'm going to go back and soften that cheek a little bit and soften her mouth. Okay. So again, I'm not going to add anything to her hair. I just wanted to add some color to her face and to the background. And then we'll add more color to her hair with our embellishments. So we have her painted and now we're going to go ahead and put our two pieces of fabric together. Do, 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 do. Now, I like these little projects because you don't have to know how to sew or follow a pattern to complete it, which I know how to do neither. Well, I know how to sew, but I am horrible at following patterns. I can make ones up myself, but <laughs> that doesn't help much. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line these up. You want to make sure they're face to face. So if you have a fabric that has, you know, um, a pattern on one side, you want to face that pattern down and place it on top of your canvas uh, piece. 
kind of just line that up. It doesn't match up perfectly, you're okay. We just want to make sure. Now I left a little bit of room at the bottom. It gives me a little um, free room. Now with your fabric tack, fabric tack is by Beacon Adhesive. And um, it's exactly what it says it's for, it's fabric. And you could bond fabric and lace, glass, leather, woods. It's basically uh, adhesive for all purposes. I use this on jewelry pieces. I, you name it, and I use it on it. It's got a nice binding agent to it, so later on, once it's dry, you're not going to have pieces falling apart. I find that happens with the hot glue guns. And um, I do use hot glue gun, but for the most part, I use this. I've had scrapbook pages that have gone through Hades and back, and I never had anything fall off of them. Now what I'm doing is I'm adding just a nice thin line, um, medium to thin line of adhesive all the way around. You want to go as close to the edge as you can. Now I'm going to go ahead and adhere this side down. Now you don't want to go, what we're going to do, kind of press the, the fabric together. We need to look at our bottom piece. We want to leave this corner open. So we'll go ahead and adhere the other three or other two sides first. We're keeping that open so that we're able to flip it um, right side out and fill it with our stuffing. Okay, so again, I'm just bringing that adhesive around the edge. Now, if you have a sewing machine, you definitely can. All you do is if you're um, going to sew it, sew it with a single stitch. Nothing too complicated. Because it's an accent pillow, it doesn't have to be um, that um, foundationally strong because you're going to end up, let's see, I'm missing a piece of adhesive right here. Um, you're not going to be handing, handling it a lot. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and come around this edge. Now next Tuesday, 11, thir or 11 o'clock, yeah, 11, um, Jody Lee's going to be on sharing a project with her new collection. So make sure you guys check that out. I'm going to be on next Thursday night doing some cards. And then again, what we're going to do is we're going to keep a little spot open over here. We're just going to adhere this over this side. Okay. I'm going to kind of pull it because the fabric again isn't it's kind of wonky. Okay. Now you do want um, some type of fabric for the backing that has a little give to it so when you fill it up it has room to move. Um, just keep that in mind. Again, most fabrics will work that way. I'm just going to trim this off, my little ends off. Now, if you have a very loose canvas like this, uh, just so you know, it will um, it will stop the adhesive will stop it from running. Okay. butterfly collection. So I just want to make sure that our ends or edges are nice and adhered. That way when we flip it right side out, I want to make sure I got all the corners. We didn't miss any fabric. I'm going to pull at the edges just to make sure you don't have any blind spots that you missed. Alright, so it looks like we're good. We'll find out here in a minute, huh? If my adhesive is dry or not, it's not dry all the way. Let me hit it with a heat gun real quick, just to make sure. And you can't really heat it with a heat gun, because you heat it back up, and if you heat it too much, it'll turn it to goo. You just want to lightly hit it. Okay. Now, 
where did my corner go that I left open? <laughs> oh, it's been one of those weeks for me. Let me tell you. Here it is. Okay, so let's flip this around. Now, if some of your fabric pulls um, at the edges, like where we're working at right now, don't fret. We can glue it back together once we have it flipped, okay? Because it isn't completely dry, I suggest waiting at least probably 20 minutes before you try flipping it around. But look at the seams are just as clean as if you sewed it, okay? So um, let it make sure it bonds really well. Wait a few minutes. Because of time, of course, I'm kind of rushing this. Push, make sure you push your corners out. Okay. And then this corner over here. We have our little pillowcase ready to go. Look at that. So fun and marvelous. Huh? Um, you can get fabric tack pretty much anywhere. Michael's, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, all of those places carry fabric tack in their adhesive um, area. Their adhesive department row will have it. Usually it's towards the bottom um, shelf. So we have our piece. Again, I have some batting that I had left over from another project. I'm just going to use that. I'm going to pull it apart so it's more like stuffing instead of batting. Okay. Making it kind of floofy. Take some and just start stuffing the stuffing out of it, into it. Eh. <sighs> Again, stuffed animals, old stuffed animals work great for this. If your children will um, let you part, let them will part with them, of course. I'm kind of being gentle because my sides aren't completely dry. And I don't want to rip a hole through my seams. You know what I think this is, to be honest with you? I have a feeling that is the shiny um, snow that you could put under your tree. Because it has glitter in it. <laughs> oh, you never know what you're going to get at my house. I tell you. Okay, we're going to add a little bit more, probably almost fit this whole rest of this piece in. <laughs> I did kill the bunny for stuffing. <laughs> I did it. It was going to go to um, the food and clothes closet. It's like our Goodwill in town. And it was one of the cheapy bunnies. I think the kids, one of the kids got it for Easter or something. Okay, so we have this opening now. And what you're going to do is you're going to just fold those edges in, just like that. And we're going to add some adhesive to the edge so that we could glue our piece together. Alrighty. So let's put that up together. We're going to run our bead of glue. Be kind of generous with it here because come on. let me raise the camera back up. Sorry guys. Just raise it up just a little bit. So it's easier to Um, you can put a sealant on the cover if you want. Ah, I brought glue on the back. You could put, um, like, I would just use, like, a, what is it called? Scotch guard. Because we're not going to be using this a lot. Um, it's not like you're wearing it or anything. Um, you don't really need to, to seal it. 
So once I have this edge glued down, like so, once that's dry, I can move the fabric inside around to kind of fill it out. Now, if you want to do a larger piece, do like a 12 by 12, you can even buy just an insert. Or you can even buy the covers already um, done and paint them and decorate them. It's a great way to kind of um, give a little style to your decor without spending a lot of money. So we have that little beautiful thing right here, okay? So now we're gonna do a little bit of embellishing. Um, I just take some of my extra flowers. I may have, I used on the original um, some flowers from the Bloom Collection. I don't have any more, of course. And the flowers I used on here, I found out you can't get any more. So I'm gonna pull a couple others, let's see. what I have in my little goodies over here. Oh, you want to see a goodie box? Oh, wait. I got a goodie box to show you. Okay, got to find somewhere to put the butane lighter. Okay. So, this little box right here is full of odds and ends that I have kind of collected over the years. <laughs> so we're gonna pull pieces from that. Is my video still running? Cause it's not showing that I am on the chat. Okay. So I'm just going to pull a couple pieces from here. Of course, I need more fabric type, type pieces for the piece we used or created. So we're just going to pull a couple. I have too much junk. Okay, thank you, Carrie. Too much junk. Here's some um, little pieces from my metal flower collection. The metal flowers that came out. So I think that's good. I, I haul this little box with me to class workshops and I let people kind of have a free for all with what's in there. It's fun. So I have a couple little flowers. I'm going to go ahead and adhere those again with our fabric tag. If you want to make this kind of like a tooth fairy pillow, they can hang on the wall or on the door um, so you don't have to trek through their dirty bedroom. Um, when you're gluing this together, stick a piece of ribbon um, between the layers and you can adhere it. Actually, what you do is you would um, put the ribbon inside here, let the tails hang out that way. So when you're gluing it, it'll um, flip over correctly. That's just another little idea. You can create a little door hanger with it as well. So I'm just going to... Glue these little bad guys on here. And I'm going to do my dimensional pearls last because I want to make sure that I'm not going to be touching and handling the pillow for a while after I'm done. Okay. Whoop. okay. So I'm using the rule of three on this piece. Just add three little embellishments. You don't have to go too crazy. Um, let's use, I'm gonna use the Luminaire um, Jacquard 3D dimensional metallic paint and, and adhesive. Let me get the gunk off the edge. Make sure it's gonna work. Okay, Oop. So once you're done with the piece, I'll accept the dimensional paint. You can do the dimensional paint, and what I did was I went ahead and all these, she has like little a set of pearls on her head and her hair, and I'm gonna kind of paint those pearls in.
And this will stick to your fabric too. I kind of want to place them a little bit apart from each other or they'll just kind of blend in together. Okay. And then I'll do some back here. You could glue rope so it looks like she's got rope in her hair if you want. So we just added a few little accents. Ooh, there we go. A few little accents to her. Quick little present. Um, didn't take us a whole lot of time. Now um, we have some time left. I wanted to show you more about the watercolor pencils. Uh, let me grab a piece of paper. Grab watercolor paper. I'm almost out. I need to order more. I have one piece of paper left in this pad. A lucky day. Okay, so let's move our little pillow aside and put our pillow so she doesn't get jump, jumbled up here. Now let's pick another stamp. Again, I'm going to use a permanent ink pad because I don't want my pencil to run or my ink to run with my pencil. I'm using an Emily stamp. Now, I suggest if you're stamping with the watercolor pad, use the smooth side. If you didn't know this already, the watercolor paper pad has two sides. There's a textured um, side and then more of a smoother side on the back, which is really nice. Um, it's more of a multi-purpose. It's about a mid-grade watercolor paper. So I'm going to tear this last piece out, flip it over. We have our smooth side. Stampers really seem to like that. We're going to go ahead and put that down. If I had my stamp block handy, it's still packed away from CHA. I'd use my stamp block. And as you can see, I smudged her shoulder, but that's okay. So let's. I'm going to show you a few things. First off, I'm going to show you... Um, how easy it actually blends on paper because some of you may not have been able to see that. Let's move this down just a little bit. Oh no, what did it drop? Craziness, I tell you. Why isn't she? It got really dark. I'm sorry, you guys. We'll move her over here while I'm coloring cake. Okay? Yes, this is Emily, and the last one was Serena, like Siren, Serena. Emily is actually named after my son's dog, and Quentin, the boy stamp, is named after my son. So I'm going to take that same brown color we used earlier, and I'm just going to add just a little bit. I just want to show you just the edge over here. I'm not going to do her whole face. Um, now that I'm on paper, I'm going to use a different brush. Okay, this is a um, number six, it's kind of a round oval brush. I'm going to add a little bit of water and just blend that out. Now you don't have to cover their entire face, you could just use a little bit um, to add color and accents to them, um, which is nice because you're not having to use all of this medium. Okay. So look at how quick and easy that was. Let me show you guys up close how nice and pretty that color is. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take um, some blue. I'm going to just show you some um, color on here and show you how much this color spreads. Okay. 
Okay. We also do variegated. I'm going to take my green and come from this side, blend it softly into our blue, blend a little bit more blue into that green. I'm going to take a larger brush. I'm actually going to use the black one I used earlier so I could spread it out a little bit smoother. Over from this side. Look how pretty that is. Isn't that pretty? Let's see. Um, let's use this really deep brown color. Make sure you rinse with watercolors. You want to make sure you rinse, 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 brush your brush because um, it'll be it makes it so much nicer you don't get that muddied color you don't rinse between colors because um, watercolors are so thin you'll get a lot of mixture in color really easily okay and what's another nice um, thing about the watercolor pencils is look at how almost completely they blend out. I have a very thin line left there. Um, that's probably because I let it set too long. But with some watercolors, no matter how hard you try to blend out, you don't blend out that entire surface. So this is a really nice um, watercolor pencil. They're really soft, like I said earlier. Um, they blend really easily. And they're just a really nice all-around uh, watercolor pencil. Now, um, I do have one other thing I want to talk to you guys about, something new for Prima, is Prima has a new kit, um, is working, have some, blah, 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 has some kits coming out, brand new, started um, right at CHA, and um, they are out on createandcraft.com, it's a new um, craft channel in the U.S., and they have uh, this weekend, it's their kickoff this weekend, and I believe they have how many kits? I think they have four or five kits. Um, click on createandcraft.com. Click the program guide and you'll see all of the show times. First one is tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern time. So that is something really cool. Sharon um, was on during CHA. And they'll show you all of the kit content contents. It's kind of like crafter's version of QVC, which is really cool. So make sure you check that out. It's create, C-R-E-A-T-E-A-N-D-C-R-A-F-T dot com. And you'll see all of Prima's new um, kits coming out. Alrighty. And again, Jody's going to be on Tuesday at February, on February 3rd, 11 a.m. Pacific time. She'll be showcasing her new butterfly collection with a mini book. And then I will be back on again Thursday the 5th at 6.30 at p.m. Pacific time and I will be creating a set of um, cards using the bloom stamps. So I hope you guys enjoyed and thank you for coming tonight. Any questions before we stop? Okay, I think we're good. I'd love to see any pieces that you guys make using the Bloom Girls on Live with Prima's Facebook page. Also, if you didn't know, we have a page on Facebook, uh, Bloom Girls Creative Group. If you look Bloom Girls Creative Group up, it'll come right up. And um, we've kind of I created this group so that you could share all of your creations with the Bloom Girl stamps or just your girl art period. So make sure you come and join us there. Have a good night, everybody, and I will see you next Thursday.